Okay, so we plotted the points based on the information that they gave us. They gave you some pretty important information up in the word problem, not just on the table. The Probably what I would have done is uh, find my greatest, it says reaches the greatest height at point seven and reaches the lowest point at 1.7. So I just had to know what my greatest height was. Well, the diameter of the wheel is 16, which means it's still 16 this way, and three feet of it's underwater. So that means my highest point would be 13. So at 0.7, I have my highest point. So I put a dot there. And then at 1.7, I have my lowest point. It also told me that this rotates at a revolution, one revolution every two seconds. So two seconds after this peak, I'm going to have another one. It tells me highest point is at 2.7. So two seconds after at 2.7, I have another 13. If that is all you graphed, that's really all you need. So if all you got was this, that's enough. I've told you guys, since we started graphing these, the most important thing for you to identify if you've been given the graph is to identify the center. Where is halfway between the peak and the valley? Halfway between this peak and this valley is right here. Now I can count from that line up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, I didn't put it in the right place. I think I started to. I can't see it. It's because of the way they number these. I can check. The reason I knew it wasn't right is because I know I'm supposed to have eight up and eight down. How do I know that? Because your diameter is 16. So it should go from the middle to the top should be 8, and from the middle to the bottom should be 8. And it wasn't, it was 7. So I had to bump my D value down 1. So now I've found the middle. That is your D. So D equals 5. That amount, that 8 that I counted up and down, what is that? Wait, what? The 8 that I counted up and down, what is that? Wait, Amplitude, wait. which is A. So if I'm going to make, question number two is asking me to write the function, the cosine function. I need an A, a B, a C, and a D. I have a D and I have an A. Where can I find B? Very good. Period is 2 pi divided by B. And I know my period. They told me my period. It's 2. Even if you didn't read all this, you still could have figured out it's 2 because you count from peak to peak. And from 0.7 to 2.7 is 2. So I plug 2 into that. Solve for B. And you end up B, getting B equals pi. Because your 2's get gone. They cancel out. So now I have A, D, B, and I just need C. C is your phase shift. It depends on whether you're looking for sine or cosine. Because if it's cosine, you're looking for the first peak. If it is sine, you are looking for the first middle that goes up. So if I was doing sine, which I'm not, but if I was doing sine, I'd be looking for this value right here. Because that's a middle that goes up. But I'm looking for cosine, because the problem number two told me to use cosine. So I'm looking for this first peak. Well, it's right here, and it used to be over here. So how far over has it shifted? 0. 0.7. 0. 0.7. That's your phase shift. Now, it has shifted 0. 0.7 to the right. So we have to put minus 0. 0.7. So I'm going to put my function is f of x equals 8 cosine pi x minus 0.7 plus 5. Once you get that, the rest of this can be answered in your calculator. It asks me, what was the height at the exact moment when Monty's tail got caught? Now, if you were, when you graph these by hand, it probably looked, if I drew one earlier, it was terrible. Mine don't come out very nice. But even this one, it almost looks like it's at zero.
square root of 0, but it's not. You put this function in your calculator and go to your table and you'll see that you're, it is not in fact at 0, 0. So um, do I need to be in radian or degrees? Radian. How do you know that? Because of the pi. Windows not set correctly for this right now, but I'm looking. I'm more control, concerned about my table right now. So I hit Control T at zero, which is when Monty's tail got caught at zero seconds. It is 0.2977. It's at a height of 0.2977. Now it asks me, I'm going to set my window real fast, because the next question asks me to figure out with my graphing calculator when the equation equals zero. So I'm going to set my window like their window. their window, and it's asking me, when is the function equal to zero? Where on the graph would this thing be equal to zero? Negative, what ways you say that? Okay, when he goes underwater, right? When he goes underwater, it equals zero, and when else does it equal zero? When it comes back up, it equals zero right when he hits the water from the top side, and it equals zero when he comes back up and hits the water from the bottom side. So he hits, this is a zero, right here it equals zero, and right here it equals zero, and right here it equals zero, and right here it equals zero. So it's asking me to go ahead and find those. So I'm going to do um, analyze graph, and I am looking for the zeros, where it equals zero. Okay, so there I got for my first zero, I got 1.4149. That was a going in the water zero. That is when Monty went in the water at 1.415. He entered the water. So now I need the coming out of the water answer. There's my coming out of the water answer, and I just moved it up so I could see it. 1.985. Now, I could do a, a same thing again and find the other two. 
But there's actually an easier way, because I know how often this thing repeats itself. How often does it repeat? Every two seconds, which means the next time he goes in the water, it's going to be 3.415, and he's going to come out of the water at 3.985. He's going to enter, water, enter the water again at 5.415, and come back out of the water at 5.985. He's going to enter the water again at 7.415 and come back out of the water again at 7.985. Is everybody okay? All right, so now the next question is, during each revolution of the wheel, how long is Monty under the water? And how do you find that? Yep, you subtract the two points. So how long is he under the water? 0.57 seconds. You can get that just from 1.985 minus 1.415. You get 0.57 seconds. All right, now this last question has nothing to do with trigonometry. This is all just mathematics. In digital animation, films are created at a rate of 30 frames per second. If the scene runs for 8 seconds, how many frames of film will show Monty at or below the water's surface? So the first thing is, it's 30 frames per second, and this scene is going to run for 8 seconds. So how many frames total will that be? Okay, so I've got 240 total frames. know that currently how much time does Monty spend under the water? 0.57 seconds for every two seconds. So it's really 0.57 divided by two to figure out how long he would be under there for one, for one second, right? And then if I just multiply that, sixty-eight frames. I got sixty-eight point four, but you can't have a fourth of a frame or a ten, four tenths of a frame. Everybody okay? So what you just did was solve a trigonometric equation. We found the zeros. And remember, zeros are solutions, are roots. Now, we just did it the easy way with your calculator, and that is how we're going to start this. Today, we're going to be doing them with our calculator.